guys, gals, and my fellow gender non conforming pals. Welcome back. I'm C28 and I'm exhausted. I'll explain that later. So, um, welcome back to the video log. So, I think this is number 13 or something. Um, yes, yeah, so we just completed uh, day one of week two of Principles of Music, where we went over intervals. Intervals. What are those, you may ask? Of course you're not, because you're probably a fellow musician. But intervals are the distance between notes. So I can pull up actually our assignment. Boom, boom, boom. I guess I can't pull it up. That sucks. Uh, oh, there it is. Perfect. That's actually, that's not it. Anyway, <laughs> we learned about um, intervals. So the distance between notes um, and the different terminology. So let me go to my notes actually for this. There we go. Um, so if you take like your, your regular scale, say a C scale, uh, C major scale, your first is gonna be that tonic note, that very first note on the scale. Your second is gonna be D, second note on the scale. What's your third? It's gonna be the E, followed by the F. G, A, B, um, and pretty much the number it is in the scale is the interval it is away from the tonic. Um, but there's a little bit more to it because you also have your major, minor, diminished, and augmented uh, interval naming conventions. So if you were to take a regular major scale um, and you get those intervals, it's going to be a perfect first, which is just the tonic, a major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, uh, major seventh, and perfect eighth, eighth, which is again, just the tonic at a higher octave. Um, but if you were to change those, we learn the name for that. So if you were to take a perfect, as in your, you really wouldn't do it with one, but your, um, your four and five. So if you take your four and five, um, you can move those down and you'll get a diminished. You can also move them up and you get augmented. Um, but you may ask, what if you move up or down a major? Well, if you move down a major, you get a minor. If you move up a major, you don't because it's either the minor of the one above it or it's the diminished of the one above it. Um, there, there's no augmented major. <laughs> Uh, but that's pretty much what we're learning. All sorts of terminology for it. What I loved learning is our instructor, we had a sub uh, in today, and our sub instructor went over what the hell the circle of fifths actually is. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. There. So you may know the circle of fifths as something that goes along the lines of C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp. But why? Here's why. And I, it's so obvious, and many of you probably know this, but I didn't, so this was fantastic for me to find out. Um, it's going up five, five semitones, I believe. Yeah, you're going up. Wait, wait, let me see if that math checks out. Hold up a second. Ah, never mind. I see, no, there's an algorithm for it. <laughs> I wrote it down. You go up whole, whole, half, whole, whole. And that's whole note versus a half note. So I won't explain that. <laughs> and doing that, you get to the next note. So if I go C and I go whole to D, whole to E, uh, half to F, and then, okay, my, my, uh, Notes may be terrible, I'll be honest, but it made sense. <laughs> I'm not an instructor, so I guess I can't explain it very well. Um, anyway, it made sense. You're going up a fifth, basically. You're going up a fifth every time. Boom, 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 boom. And it also increases the amount of sharps or flats, the amount of accidentals in the scale. So C has zero, G has one, D has two, A has three, and it keeps going up um, until it goes down. 
and it's a fun little mathematical I guess is it technically a fractal it's not a fractal because it doesn't go on you can't infinitely zoom I guess maybe you can if you go with like your tones but whatever <laughs> um yeah so pretty much intervals was the only thing we did today uh, going over those there I really genuinely don't have a lot in my notes that's that's it it's it was a lot of practice today that we got really because we had practice in class of um we'd have the piano roll or piano uh in front of us and then the instructor would say okay we're in the key of g major what's a major sixth up what's a perfect fifth up um and then we have to guess it and that helped us understand it better um yeah and then lab today uh kind of a little bit stressed because the due date was messed up um i blame fso hey you know technology i'm not gonna blame the instructor <laughs> um but hey it, it was locked yesterday opened uh, a few hours ago but due yesterday and i was like shit <laughs> am i late but no uh, everyone got that and uh, i was so relieved to find out i didn't miss my first assignment um ever so I'm, like, I'm a good student i don't miss things what is this um yeah but it, it was it was just a mistake it's due tomorrow open today um but what we did was we had a i was trying to open that earlier let me see if i can open it now because it's very rude that logic is not cooperating with me again technology being so incredibly rude by not uh cooperating boom i'm pretty sure that's it, that's it. there we go so the lab today was we had essentially this uh, set of tracks and different scales so each scale would change uh we had say a uh, key of f major and it would play a little tune for us and then you hear guitar we had to match the guitar and then we move on to say uh c major and we'd play the guitar to it and the reason we were doing this is it helps us understand how intervals sound so we're in a scale we're in a major scale and you're listening to how the notes change relative to each other and trying to remember the interval that is so next time you hear oh it moved by about this much you remember that interval um i'm gonna need to practice this a lot more to be honest i was able to complete the thing earlier than most but i still didn't get it i, I still need to practice a bit to get it um it's mirror training we're starting to get into the advanced territory where my, my years of training have um, been surpassed by what we're learning. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much all we did today. Um, so, as I was saying in the beginning of this video, that I'll explain it later, what is it and why am I tired? I saw this Brian Brushwood video like three days ago and it seemed interesting. It's about the evil Russian push-up method, as it's called, or the program, evil Russian push-up program. It's, a, it's evil. <laughs> I tell you, it's evil. I'm, I don't have all the little stats on how it works in front of me, but essentially you do your max amount of push-ups you can possibly do before you just, you can't, you're like shaking and you fall. Um, you get that number. And you get a certain percentage of it every day you have to do every certain amount of time. So like I maxed out at 38 and then I had to do three days ago, uh, or no, two days ago, I had to do, um, what was it? 11 push-ups every hour. Then yesterday I had to do um, 19 push-ups every hour. Today I have to do, and I, I did it before shooting the video so the time wouldn't elapse, I have to do, and I've been doing, um, <clears throat> 23 push-ups every 45 minutes. The worst one is week two, where it's like, I think 55% um, every 20 minutes on day two, and then day three of week two is, um, it's like 37% every 15 minutes. But it, it's seriously like every 
hour you were awake every 15 minutes you were doing it and uh, you can see why I would be in pain and out of breath it sucks <laughs> I'm getting to the point now where I can't actually complete them all in one go so I have to like break them up and pain absolute pain so if you see me getting more swole or whatever throughout these videos um, I'm not taking um, steroids I just hate myself I don't know, Joe Rogan says, take care of your body, they'll take care of you. So I'm taking care of my body, hopefully it takes care of me too. I'm also abusing my body, so hopefully it doesn't abuse me. I am definitely feeling the lactic acid though. Yeah. Um, song day today went fairly well, I'll say. The vocal work was a bit dodgy, but um, towards the end, after the, uh, the first chorus, it started to pick up and get better. Um, that's about it. That's nice. So if you have any questions, comments, please leave them in that comment section below. And I'll get back to you unless it is something simple, like why is Taco Bell your favorite food? And then I'll simply answer, well, I like the flavors involved and the textures, specifically in things like the Burrito Supreme and the Crunchwrap Supreme. Um, that is it. So without further ado, Take care, God bless, and goodbye.